Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the impact of currency devaluation on Indian economy during the COVID-19 pandemic period. Now before going to discuss about the topic, let me first explain the meaning of devaluation. All of you know what is exchange rate. For example, if I say the exchange rate of Indian currency, say it is 70 rupees per dollar, it means that to have 1 dollar, we have to spend 70 rupees. So this is the exchange rate of India. Now if I go through the next table, you can see that if there is devaluation, that 70 rupees is increased to 80 rupees. That means now to have 1 dollar, we have to spend 80 rupees. So the 70 rupees is increased to 80 rupees, this is called devaluation. That is the value of Indian currency has reduced. To have the same amount of foreign currency, now we have to spend more rupees than before. So this is the devaluation of Indian currency. When Indian currency is devalued, at the same time there is an appreciation of the value of the foreign currency. For example, if we consider a foreigner who has dollar, then initially if he give one dollar, then he will get 70 rupees. Now if he give one dollar, then he will get 80 rupees. So he is getting more rupees than before. So that is how for him his currency value has increased because to, by giving the same amount of dollar, he is getting more Indian rupee than before. So devaluation of Indian currency means appreciation of foreign currency. So this is the devaluation. So in short, I can say if the value of currency is falling, this is the devaluation. And this is represented by the increase in exchange rate. Uh, Indian currency is measured in terms of foreign currency, basically in terms of dollar. Because dollar, US dollar is accepted as the international standard. But during current period, it is seen the importance of US economy is falling and e uh, more importance is given to some other countries like Russia, China, etc. Now as COVID is not only uh, true for India, it is true for all the countries of the world. So Russia, China, these countries are also getting negative impact of COVID-19. So if there is an for increase in exchange rate that is devaluation of Indian currency with respect to US dollar, it is not so true if we, uh, if we measure Indian rupees in terms of some other foreign currencies like US, uh, like Russia, China, etc., who are also, uh, giving, uh, also having the negative impact of COVID-19. Now we are coming to the next discussion that if there is devaluation of Indian of currency, then what is its impact on the economy? In general, we can say basically there are two impacts. The first impact is on the import sector and the second impact is on the export sector. Now how devaluation is affecting the import sector? Uh, as the value of domestic currency has increased and you are going to import some commodity whose price is expressed in terms of foreign currency, so for the domestic people, it is just like an increase in price of importable. Because to have the same foreign currency, they have to pay more of domestic currency than before because of the devaluation. And that is why for them, it is just an increase in price of importable. So all of you know if price is rising then demand should fall and the demand for importable is falling. So what is the end result? The end result is the import expenditure is falling. And this is something good in terms of the balance of trade. Now come to the export sector. When there is devaluation, that means that again the current the value value of your domestic currency is falling. So for the foreigner, as you are exporting, so price of your exportable in terms of your own domestic currency and your exportable is consumed by the foreign countries. Now the foreign countries, they are thinking the price of their importable, that means our exportable, is actually falling. So as the price of our exportable commodity is falling to them, so they are, uh, they are just increasing demand of our exportable, so our export will rise. This is the end result. Now if export is rising, then the export, the revenue, the foreign exchange revenue from the export sector should increase. So what we are getting, 
more foreign exchange income and less foreign exchange expenditure. So if income is rising and expenditure is falling, definitely this is a good indicator or good impact on the balance of trade because balance of trade is actually the difference between the value of export minus value of import. So if value of export is rising and value of import is falling, so definitely this is something good for the balance of trade. So this is the theory which I am talking about. But the reality may not be like this. For example, if we consider India, India is importing some necessary commodity. One of, the, one of them is crude oil. Now crude oil is a necessary commodity. What we see during the COVID period, that price of crude oil has increased significantly because all time low supply was there. Now as it is the necessary commodity and the price of necessary commodity is rising in the world market and India had to import it, so that is why there was a huge expenditure for the import sector. So what the theory is saying may not be true in reality. Now come to the next one that is the impact of COVID-19 in India. First of all, COVID-19 is giving all the negative impact for India. For example, the year 2020 is, the co is called the year of great lockdown. Most of the time, the country was under the lockdown phase. So production was stopped, the demand was stopped, the daily life is actually standstill during this time. Be and the, at the same time, the health hazard was huge. And so the expenditure for the health sector, for the vaccination, that was also huge. As there is lack of demand, lack of supply, so we can see there is a huge amount of fiscal deficit during this time. The aggregate demand has reduced significantly by around 8% during the year 21-22. Why? The reason behind this is that the people are not getting income the people who are getting income, they are also very much uncertain about their future, about the economic uncertainty. They are also very much, un very much uh, uncertain about their health situation in future. Because all of these uncertainty, people have reduced their demand significantly. And what is the net result? The net result is a significant fall in aggregate demand in the country. And at the same time, aggregate supply was also reduced by around 6.5% during the same time. Why? Because there is lack of raw material, lack of work environment, and obviously lack of demand. So aggregate demand, aggregate supply from both the sides, we are watching that there is a fall in, there is a fall in the growth of the economy. So these are all the negative impact, broadly, these are all the negative impact of COVID-19. Now come to the positive side. Obviously, COVID-19 is not giving any positive impact for the economy, but fortunately, Indian economy, during this time, Indian economy was placed with the nature. The normal rainfall was there, so the agricultural production was very much sufficient and that is why it was expected that food supply should be continuous as before. And the support price, the minimum support price which is given by the central government to the farmer is increased during this time so that the farmers will get some amount of income and that will be continuous income. At the same time, through the central government scheme, the poor households, they are also getting the food supply through the PDS system. So at the, at the, at the time of the negative impact of COVID-19, these positive effects are also working simultaneously. Now we are going to discuss about the impact of COVID-19 on the Indian government policy. First of all, I, I have to mention that government has reduced the open market operation rate significantly to increase the money supply. Now what is open market operation? The open market operation means it is the monetary instruments actually under the open market operation heading, there are some monetary instruments which the central government has to control the money market. Now most important of them are repo, reverse repo, CRR, SLR, etc. So let me explain them in short. 
First of all, what is repo? Repo is the repurchase agreement. This is done by the central government through the dealer from the people. Actually, the central government is taking loan from the people through the dealer. And this is actually a overnight loan. So in the next day, generally the central government is repaying the loan with the interest rate. So this is the repo. Now come to reverse repo. Reverse repo is just the agreement from the people side, that is the creditor who are going to give loan to the government for a single day. So this is the reverse repo. Now what is cash reserve ratio? Cash reserve ratio, in short, it is called CRR. Now cash reserve ratio is actually the mandatory saving which the commercial bank has to save to the Central Bank of India. The name is Reserve Bank of India in our case. So here what is done, uh, the, the money which is saved in the commercial banks, a certain portion of that money has to be saved by the commercial bank to the central bank. Now why it is done? Because this is for the emergency. If somehow there will be some currency crisis, this money will be used. So that is the purpose of the cash reserve ratio. Now when central government is reducing those interest rate like repo rate, reverse repo or the CRR rate, that means central government is trying to circulate more currency in the economy. Now come back to the impact of COVID-19 on the government policy. So here we have to say, first of all, government has reduced the repo rate, reverse repo rate and the CRR rate as I already said. Uh, and not only that, the Security and Exchange Board of India, they have also reduced the interest rate for the, in, the, for the payment defaulter. The moratorium is also given maybe for three months, but moratorium is also sanctioned by the central government. Some poor households, they are getting so many subsidies from the government. And at the same time, the loan without collateral, this is also sanctioned. The small scale industries, the self-help groups, they are getting financial support from the central government. So mostly, or in broad, these are the uh, instruments, these are the policies which the central government has used during the COVID, uh, COVID pandemic period to fight against the pandemic situation. Now come to the next one that is the package. Here I must say that if I want to if I want to discuss in details about the government policies, then government has actually announced three packages during the COVID-19 period. Package 1, Package 2 and Package 3. Now Package 1 is basically for the individual level. Package 2 is basically to support the industrial sector. And package three is basically for the benefit of the economy as a whole. So let me first explain in details about package one. Now under package one, uh, the women across the country, they are getting 500 rupees per month under the Janhan project. At the same time, the workers uh, under the NREGA scheme, they are, their wage, the daily wage is increased from 182 rupees per day from 202 rupees per day. Now, the, under the Ujala scheme, several households, millions of households, they are getting subsidized fuel. The poor households, the disabled person, the widow, they are also getting 1000 rupees per month as a subsidy for next couple of months. Now the, at the same time I must say the BPL ration card holder they are also getting 5 kg of wheat and 1 kg of pulse per month at the very subsidized rate almost zero price. And the under the Pradhan Mantri Kishan scheme, the um, agricultural workers are getting rupees 2,000 rupees per month for next three months. The health workers, their mediclaim facility was enhanced to a large extent. The small vendors, they are also getting the financial support from the government. So mostly these are the announcement under package one. Now come to package two. As I said, Package 2 is basically to help the industrial sector. 
so a huge amount of loan at the very low interest rate nominal interest rate is given to the small medium and the large scale industries the stressed industries are getting more importance under this scheme not only that the non banking financial sector the microfinance sectors they are also getting loan at the low interest rate government has reduced tax significantly so that in the economy significant money will be circulated at the same time as i already said the small vendors the street vendors they are also getting the financial support from the government the national bank for agriculture and rural development in short which is called nabard he also that that bank also sanctioned a lot of money as the emergency working capital so these are the broad announcements under package 2 now come to the last package that is package 3 under package 3 it is basically package 3 is basically to help the economy as a whole so the cash reserve ratio the repo rate reverse repo rate these are all reduced to circulate to give more currency in circulation in the economy the mutual funds they are getting a lot of money from the government so that to stabilize their functioning not only that the commercial papers the debentures the in the investment in bonds they are also getting a lot of money from the government so that they can smooth their functioning as before so these are three packages which is announced by the central government during covid 19 just to stabilize the economic function now come to the next diagram the diagram is showing how the exchange rate is changing in india for last 10 years if you leave first couple of years if you just concentrate for last 3 bars because the last 3 bars is showing the situation during covid 19 you can see the exchange rate is increased from 74 to 77 around 78 rupees for 2020 uh, 202122 so we can understand that there is an huge increase in exchange rate or we can say that there is a devaluation significant devaluation of indian currency during the covid pandemic period last two years now we are going to discuss about the reason behind this exchange rate devaluation so here i must say basically there are two reasons behind the exchange rate devaluation the first reason is lack of foreign currency in the economy and the second reason is the huge currency domestic currency circulation within the economy so let me first explain the first reason that is the crisis of foreign currency in the economy why it is so first of all we have to understand that covid is not only true for india it is true for all the countries of the world us was not the exceptional so us also getting the negative impact of covid 19 it also get the problem of financial crisis to get more finance inside its economy it has increased its interest rate so as us economy has increased the interest rate the foreigners who have invested their capital in india they are taking their currency from india to invest it in us so what is the effect for india there is a huge foreign currency outflow from the country so foreign currency crisis is natural at the same time as i said there is an increase in price of the crude oil now crude oil is a necessary commodity and most of the crude oil indian indian economy is importing so for this this is the way for the import purpose there is a huge expenditure of foreign currency so these are basically the two main reasons of the crisis of foreign currency within the country that is in india during the covid period now come to the second reason of the exchange rate devaluation that is a huge uh, money circulation in the economy why it is so the first reason is there is a fall in interest rate in india so as interest rate is falling so people are not interested to save their money in any of the banks or financial institutions they are more interested to keep their money in their hand that is cash holding has increased now when cash holding has increased so in the economy there is a huge supply of currency and when people have more currency in their pocket they are demanding more commodity and what is the net result there is a continuous increase in price of the commodity which is called inflation 
So inflation is available or very much visible during the COVID period. And at the same time, I must say, government has taken the policy of monetization of their fiscal deficit. Now, how they have monetized? They have just sold their government bonds. Now, when government is selling their bonds, that means the bond is, uh, government is purchasing. Let me explain the second point, that why in the Indian economy there is a huge money supply. First of all, the government has reduced the interest rate. Now, when the interest rate has reduced, people are not interested to save their money in the financial institutions, maybe in the commercial bank, maybe some other investment. So they are not interested to invest their currency. On the contrary, they are trying to keep their money in their hand. That is, cash holding has increased. Now, when people have more money in their pocket, they are demanding more of the commodity. So there is an increase in demand in the economy that creates increase in price. If that increase in price continues over time, this is called inflation. So in the economy, there comes the problem of inflation. At the same time, government has a continuous fiscal deficit. Government was trying to monetize that fiscal deficit. How he can do that? He is trying to purchase government bond from the people. That is the monetization of the fiscal deficit. So government, when purchasing the bond from the people, they are giving money to the people. So this is another way people have more currency in their hand. So these are the basically two reasons behind the circulation of more currency inside the economy. And when more currency in circulation, that means the price of that currency will automatically fall. And the name of fall in value of the currency is called devaluation. So devaluation is coming ultimately. Now we are going to discuss about the effect of devaluation on the Indian economy. First of all, theoretically, if there is devaluation, then it will make a good impact on the balance of trade. So uh, how it is so? I have already explained the value of import will fall and the value of export will increase. That is my foreign currency income will increase and the foreign currency expenditure will fall. So this is how balance of trade will improve. But in case of COVID-19 pandemic period, the situation was just opposite. How it is so? Let me first explain the import sector. In the import sector, as I am saying that Indian economy is importing the necessary commodity like crude oil and during this pandemic period, the supply of crude oil was all time low. That is why there is a huge increase in price of the crude oil. So to export that necessary commodity, the country has to spend a lot of foreign currency for import sector. So this is the first problem during the COVID pandemic period at the, at the time of devaluation. At the same time, when there is a, if, if you consider the export sector, we can see the export sector is also getting the problem. Because of devaluation, the exportable commodity is becoming cheaper. So it is expected that demand of that cheaper commodity will increase in the world. But the problem is the world was also struggling with COVID-19. So they are also not interested to spend a lot of their money for their importable commodity. And that is why export supply has not increased significantly as it was expected. At the same time, as there is devaluation, it is also expected that from the tourism sector, Indian economy will earn a lot. But that was not happen because as it is already true that world was facing the same problem of COVID-19, they are not at all interested to come in India to get the tourism service. So that is why from the tourism sector also, the income of foreign currency was not as expected. So what is the net result? There is a huge amount of budget deficit. The budget deficit is significantly high as compared to the expected budget deficit during 2021-22. At the same time, fiscal deficit was also quite high during this time. Now, the World Bank was assuming as the crude oil is the essential commodity for the agricultural sector like India, in India, the price of food price will also increase. And this is what 
happened in reality also. So in India, the price of food, uh, food, uh, food items has increased significantly. So people with their life uh, uncertainty, with uncertainty everywhere, are also facing the problem of high price of food grain. So this is another problem Indian economy was facing after the COVID-19. Though after some time the price of food control was controlled and it is reduced, but it is quite high as compared to the pre-COVID period food price. Now we are coming to the other sides of due to explain the effect of COVID-19. Uh, the cross-border merger and acquisition has fallen significantly, so the foreign exchange income from those sectors has also reduced for India. The manufacturing sector has reduced significantly its production because of the lack of raw material. The import has reduced by 25% than before. And uh, people, they are also very much cautious about the expenditure. So they have also reduced their demand of the normal commodity because they are very much uncertain about their life. They are facing the problem of economic uncertainty, the health uncertainty, and obviously the income uncertainty. So the people, are re people have reduced the demand of the commodity inside the country. So once the demand has reduced, the production will automatically fall, and this is not at all a good indicator for the economic development. Now come to the other side. Uh, first of all, as I said, the fiscal deficit, budget deficit, these are also reduced significantly. Government was announced that for next couple of years, it is not possible to make some fiscal projection. At the same time, uh, government has taken a lot of loan from the small saving funds because of their fund crisis. So the small saving sector, the commercial sector, they are also facing the problem of fund crisis. So how they have solved that? They have increased the interest rate. So people are also facing problem because of that interest rate, because those who have already taken the loan, the repayment is quite high, the premium has increased significantly. So this is another problem Indian economy was struggling with. The uh, non-debt capital receipt has also reduced significantly. So these are the major impact which the Indian economy was getting, uh, got during the COVID-19 period. Now, after discussing all those problems, the next question is what is the government policy to solve that problem? First of all, I must say that for 2021-22, this is the first time government has announced the pandemic budget. <coughs> because government was thinking that by announcing the pandemic budget by changing the time of the budget announcement they may help the state governments to struggle uh, to fight against the pandemic struggle at the same time the expenditure for the health sector has increased significantly more than 100 percent has increased the expenditure uh, is increased more than 100 percent for the health purpose now what are the avenues where the expenditure is done the expenditure is for the vaccination program the ex expenditure for the sanitization for the nutritional development etc for all those purposes there was a huge expenditure by the government to to stabilize the economy at the same time, as there was a huge crisis of foreign currency, whatever foreign currency stock central government had, it had just redistributed this among the people just to control that. At the same time, government is also, um, also asking the uh, central agencies like IMF and World Bank to, uh, uh, to negotiate with the OPEC country so that they can increase the supply of crude oil to solve the problem of foreign currency crisis. Government has decided to sell their shares of the profitable public sector units like LIC. This is already announced. And government is obviously trying to appreciate the Indian currency and so that the Indian economy will be stabilized and people will get the assurance and people will go for the normal expenditure. Because as people are very cautious about the future, about the economic situation, they have reduced their demand. So this is not at all a good indicator for the economic development. So to make the economy smooth, to make the economy develop further, people have to spend. And 
government has to give the assurance to the people that they can spend everything will be normal so government is through different policy announcement government is trying to do that Thank you.